How is it going, folks? Welcome back to Park to Prem. Today is a transfer special. Last episode, we wrapped up season number four. Today, we're diving headfirst into season number five, preparing for the Vanarama National League. I'd argue the most difficult league to get out of in the entirety of a Park to Prem journey. It's going to be a challenge. Transfers are going to be important. With all that said, let's run the intro and get straight into things, shall we? If you did miss last episode, by the way, we did go in depth with the squad a little bit. Talked about the youth team, talked about the senior team positions. I was happy with the fact that a centre defence in mid is the top of my wish list for Christmas. If I was writing to Santa here today, I'd be asking for a very good centre defence in mid by the end of this summer. Unfortunately, Santa couldn't deliver me that. He has delivered me, though, three rather exciting young players. Now, I can't stress this enough. If you are managing down in the lower leagues in England, around April time, you'll get an inbox item where it kind of talks about the fact that clubs announce players they are releasing and not renewing the contracts of and it's all the youth players at that point I know later on uh, when players are actually released in June you get all the you know the big flashy high rep players but in April there's an important inbox item that comes through and it says hey clubs announce these players are being released there's a few of those players I've decided to sign. The first of them is Jamie Stevenson, released by Manchester City. Good little left-back option for us. In terms of how he ranks in our squad comparison list, he is basically the third best left-back in the squad. Of course, Ricky D is a right back for us. This guy though, whilst he is super inconsistent, he has some really good physicals, some okay mentals, doesn't really know how to do anything technically, but at 18 years old for £100 a week, just kind of figured he was worth a punt. One of the few punts I feel like we've made of the free signings that I've made that were released by Premier League clubs, perhaps the least exciting. Now throughout this year, Alex Bradley has been my backup right back option. He was very unhappy at the club and actually I was able to sell him for a few thousand pounds to Averley uh, before the season ended which was very kind of Avalee to make that bid for him, £2,000. He's played a handful of games for them. But with his departure, I did need a backup right back. I've picked up a backup right back, and it is Regis Batumba. This guy also plays for the Democratic Republic of Congo's youth team, which is absolutely fantastic, because if we now look at their under-23s, you can see Ngoma has a friend at Rugby Town. I feel like when you look through the list of clubs here... One of these clubs is not like the others, and it, it is Rugby Town. But this guy is an interesting option, maybe not the most natural win back in the world, just because he's not got the best dribbling or first touch, but he's got the ability to cross a ball, and in terms of as a cheap depth option for £120 a week, I think he's a great addition. The only downside with the three players I've picked up is the fact they are all 18, so next year they're all too old to play for our under-18s, and whilst we do have our under-21 squad, just as a reminder, they don't actually play any competitive competitive games. So I'm hoping this summer maybe the opportunity comes around to enter them into a league. I know it kind of comes as an inbox item where you're offered the chance to make them play competitive football. I don't know what the requirements are to do that. As for the here and now, whilst our under-21s don't play games, it's basically a dumping ground for players whose contracts are expiring at the end of next month. So the other lad I've picked up here is Bradley Edwards, released by Liverpool. Super inconsistent, but besides that, what a talent this guy could be. Natural centre attack in mid, natural striker. Going to be training him to play as a centre mid, already training him as a roaming playmaker. Think he could be a really, really strong addition to the squad. Has some insane current ability. If we just compare him with Murphy and Goma, Bradley Edwards is not really a million miles away. In fact, you could argue he's as good, just doesn't really know how to defend. In terms of how he fits into the team, not 100% sure yet. One of those signings I kind of signed because he was there. You know, for £250 a week, couldn't really say no. So in terms of the squad heading into this preseason, a 24-man team at the moment, although there are a few players with contracts expiring, I've already demoted down to the youth team, and on top of that, Brian's loan is up. So we do need to bring in a new goalkeeper. So basically, it's 23 players in the squad with one goalkeeper. Kind, kind of need to fix that. But in terms of the actual squad situation, there are a few players like Jake Cartwright who I could probably do with replace him. I, I feel like he and McAvoy are kind of the last of the old guard. Players that we brought in a few years ago who are exceptional but the reality is for the Vanarama National League we're heading into as much as I love Jakey boy here 
he's not going to be good enough. But just in general, looking at the first team, I do feel like we're in a good little spot. I've kind of blocked out a rough starting 11 that I could go with going into next year. I don't really intend on changing the tactical system, and I spent all of last episode binging up our back five. I feel like our defence is just sorted. For the first time in forever, I don't really need to think about it, and actually, the depth that we've got between Sean Stewart and a couple of the youngsters that I've just shown you means that I kind of feel like the defence doesn't need to be touched. If there was one area of the pitch of high priority... Defensive midfield, uh, Miguel Freckleton, just not really all that. He's unhappy at the fact that his contract doesn't really offer him enough. To be fair, he is on £90 a week, which is absolute robbery in the context of the rest of the squad. And I think it goes without saying, when it comes to our actual strikers, we've we've got lots of very, very good strikers. Yeah, um, we have too many strikers, if anything. So really, if I am going to make any signings this summer... It's going to be very reliant on us having sold players to open up opportunities and spaces for players to come in. I'll tell you what, when you see the list of strikers like this, it is kind of ridiculous how many I have. I will admit it. I'm back rather early here on the 2nd of May. Normally with transfer specials, I come back in a month's time. So I think to kick things off today, having had our new youngsters arrive, I'm just going to spam continue for a little bit. We'll go through the end of season ceremony and get a little closer to when the transfer windows are opening around the world and maybe some wheeling and dealing starting to happen. Okay, it is here. End of season review. Nice to have a trophy on this screen, although I feel like we've become accustomed to winning leagues in the last few years. I want to believe we can do it again next year because our squad is so good, but it is going to be a challenge. In terms of transfers made this year, signing of the year, not entirely surprising. It goes to Murphy and Goma, but in terms of contributions, I feel like he and Abbas really did change the team for us, and Welch and Moon coming in at centre-back. You can tell by their average ratings. They really did contribute a lot, and I feel like they were one of the reasons why we really did romp home with the title by the end of the year. Board confidence is an A+. That is always nice to see. We ended up finishing on 115 points, plus 73 goal difference. That's kind of nice. In terms of our FA Cup run, five games won, but we did come to a, well, disappointing defeat. Let's be honest. Wolverhampton Wanderers, a couple of episodes ago now, 3-1 defeat away from home. I still feel like that's a mad result in the grand scheme of things. An FA trophy, there's not talk about it. In terms of how we lined up this year, not entirely surprising. This 4-1-3-2 has just been the go-to system this year. Looking at the defence, a sea of green ratings. It does make me sad to see Caron Samuels there, knowing that he was dropped from the first team, and now when you look at his ranking in the squad, he's kind of the eighth best centre-back. I guess that's just a side of the improvements we've made during this season. But nevertheless, been a good player for us elsewhere in the team. Not many surprises. Abbas and Hamilton, by the end of the year, were just the go-to duo. Of course, Hamilton, fantastic player, came for our youth intake. 22 goals and 8 assists to his name. Worth noting as well, his ability right now, Vanarama National League level. So I'm hoping he is going to be ready to make that step up with us. Signing of the year did go to Murphy and Goma. Abbas picking up fans player of the season, young player of the season scored five goals in a match, did lots of cool stuff. Tommy Simkin, don't really talk about him a lot. 20 clean sheets to his name this year. That is a new club record. And we did smash our transfer record. We'll use the term smash loosely. Sam Pitt did come into the team, of course, for £20,000 from Berry During the running at the end of the year, once I knew we'd won the title, I did to moat McAvoy because he's leaving at the end of the year. Try and give Sam Pitt a couple of games. He did score. So uh, yeah, he has scored his first ever senior goal. Whether or not that means that he's justified the £20,000. I'll let you guys be the judge. You can see here as well a list of all the players who contributed to our title win. The top performers up here, Abbas and Goma, Hamilton, Pritchard, lots of the more attacking players. And in terms of the most appearances this year, it was actually Isaac Pritchard made 45 appearances, one appearance on off the bench as well, featured in every single league game. What a player this guy is. With his 16 natural fitness, never really had to rotate him out. And I feel like that did help with his development, just the amount of minutes he was able to get. And for those of you that care about the sentimentals, here is the overall best 11 of the save game at this moment in time. Sam Kelly leading the way of 142 appearances. Rio McAvoy, 102 goals. He will not be adding any more to his tally. Callum Gillen, of course, alongside him, we sold in January. He's made one appearance was signed for £110,000. Yeah, Newtown, the, the Tycoon Takeover Club, not spending their money particularly wisely. And here you can see the end of season review. I feel like that caps off the 2026-27 season. In the playoffs, Macclesfield ended up winning it all. So despite the likes of Scarborough and Kings Lynn being right up there for all the year, it meant absolutely nothing. 
And uh, yeah, well, good luck next year, lads. And with that all said and done, the players are now on a holiday. It's only the 2nd of May. I've got a lot of football manager to mash through right now. Realistically, I probably won't be looking to sign players till the start of June when they have a month left on their contract. So for the next, well, 10 minutes for me, 10 seconds for you, I'm going to go away and mash continue lots. I'll see you in a mo. There's not many sites in Football Manager more beautiful than this. Promotion has been confirmed, and with that, a whole load of contracts have just been extended. Oh, and one little thing that did come about after our promotion was the board allowed me to sign four new coaches. So I've actually signed some new coaches. We got some extra staff spots as well for scouts, which was really nice. In fact, looking at it, probably should hire another physio. But just looking at the coaching assignments here, ignore the fact the workload is on none, it's because all the players are on holiday. You can see here across the board now, in terms of the actual star ratings, we got some pretty blooming good coaching all of a sudden. Coaches like Teddy Whelan signed for £120 a week. Things you love to see. And also Daniel Dubidat, fantastically fun name to say. This guy, £180 in terms of coaches at this level as a, well, as you can see here, as a possession technical coach, not going to get much better, especially for £180 a week. What a bargain. I'm being asked to vote in the Vanarama National League Manager of the Year, but you can't vote for yourself. So like, wh why would I ever vote in this? It just really reduces my chance of winning. I'd like to think we'd win anyway when the results are announced tomorrow, but you never know, football manager's weird. I'd like to thank my subscribers, my mum, my dad, siblings, family, friends. It's been an honour, Manager of the Year, National League. I feel like it calls for a celebration, but... I've not got time for that. I've got a transfer window to get on with. And if you were wondering about our manager profile, here is how it's looking now. 71% win percentage. I believe we had an 80% win rate this season, which is mad. And in terms of our characteristics, tactical consistency, hands-on, I'm good at managing money, domestic player bias, I love... Media handling's not so good. Uh, yeah, I don't tend to do that many press conferences. I occasionally do them off camera, but the novelty very quickly wears off. Well, I very nearly made it to the start of June without anything dramatic happening. Then Newtown arrived with a bid for Oyatunde. Of course, just as a reminder, I promised Oyatunde I would sell him for 160k. But I know that you, Newtown have a tycoon takeover, and I also suspect that, as you can see here, he's not that interested in joining Newtown anyway, so I'm kind of tempted to take the mick a little bit, just kind of push my luck. Why, why not ask for £500,000? I mean, they've not told me to piss off immediately, so that's good. Uh, what's their current highest transfer that they've done? It is the £110,000 to Callum Gillen. They turned down 500. How about 350? They're not told me to piss off immediately. How about 325% of any next sale? They've offered me a percentage of profit. Ah, okay. Hmm. Do I, do I really want to push my luck here? I mean, the thing is, I'm negotiating this. He might not have any interest in joining them anyway. How about £275,000? Okay, they have actually accepted that. I'm kind of surprised they've accepted that. On the one hand, I don't really want to sell Oyatunde. Oh, no, that's not true. I don't want to sell my best players. But the issue I've got is Oyatunde wasn't in our starting eleven this year. I've already got Goldsmith as a backup striker. I've already got Kevin Gillen, who's just obviously a striking option. There's Pitt as well, who's a striking option. I almost feel like the striking area is the one area where I can afford to sell some of my better players and it won't hurt me that much. I mean, here are the players sorted by ability. Oyatunde's up there, but we have a lot of players around the same ability, so I might live to regret it. I'm going to sell him, I think. Hopefully, he actually accepts a new contract from New Town. That would be rather annoying if he now turned them down after that negotiation. I've also just noticed here, I have the option to sell Maycock's Claws for £72,000. Miles Maycock uh, got two years left on his current deal. He's on £1,300 currently. His valuation is 160 to 1.6k. I have got him on my shortlist just to keep track of him, so I am registered as a team interested in transfer. I mean, given his current valuation, given the fact we're not exactly cash strapped, it's not really a reason to cash in on that clause now. I feel like it's worth holding out on. It is uh, £70,000. In order for that kind of deal to not be worth taking, I have to suspect he will go for less than £400,000, which, given his current valuation, I'd like to think he might go for more than that down the line. The more I think about it, the more I'm thinking that deal for Oyatunde is absolute madness. Uh, I just I really hope he takes them up on it, otherwise it is going to be annoying, because I don't think there's any other team that will pay that kind of cash for him. Also, it is now the 1st of June in game, which means I can potentially make offers for players with a month left on their current contract. There are some players here 
who I was going to say look quite good. This guy is the most valuable of the lot. He looks absolutely rubbish. Sorry, Bob Sayer. Harrison Gooch. Fun name. Not so fun ability. Of all the players I've got here scouted, there is Connor Lawless. He's not very exciting. Georgie Ghent. Not very exciting. Uh, there's a 19-year-old here for Woken. Raphael Feodoru. I've definitely said that name incorrectly. 19 years old, Cypriot. He's very, very good, is he not? He's he's really good. Uh, double figures for the last two years. He's 19. How does he compare uh, with Oyatunde? Oh, my word. He makes Oyatunde look like a small child. He's wanted by teams. Preston North End and Reading want him. They're in the championship. I mean, I want him too. How much is he going to want? He wants to be an important player. <sighs> he wants to be an important player. How much is he going to ask for? £1,200. It's a lot of money, but he might actually be worth it. He's mad, isn't he? He is actually mad. Teo here, absolutely insane. I don't know why I'm saying Teo like he's French. I'm thinking of Teo Pacher. Um, that's a F1 manager reference for those out the loop. I'm comparing him with Ngoma. I'm about to have Ngoma sign on £700 a week. I'm very tempted to make an offer. I, I don't really want to get attached to the idea of signing this bloke because the reality is he probably won't end up signing for us and he'll go to one of the championship clubs. But why not offer him the big bucks? I don't really want to go above £900, but I don't mind giving him a bit more of a signing on bonus. The reason I want to have lower wages is because I know that if I have him on over £1,000, other players are going to want similar kind of wages. Uh, I'll offer him a contract extension after promotion of two years, see if he's interested in that. We will have to pay Woking £45,000, but to be honest, I kind of feel like this guy is worth it. Uh, how about £900, three-year deal? He's accepted that. Fairly professional personality, fits the club objectives, has good skill. He likes to run a lot in the National League. He's actually the eighth top goal scorer in the league we're going into at the age of 19. Interestingly enough, actually, when I look at players with contracts expiring in a month, he was up here at the top of the list. Kind of a standout player. Another player who stands out here, Anthony Morgan, playing for Wrexham. I do need a backup goalkeeper. I do, I do need a backup goalkeeper. How does he compare with Brian? He's kind of like a baby form of Brian, but not a dissimilar player at 18 years old. I feel like I could do, I could do a lot, lot worse as a backup option. Uh, thing is, he wants to be a big first-team player. Or does he? He's now accepted backup as a role. He wants £1,300. Never mind. Also, I'd have to pay Wrexham £350,000 in compensation. That's not happening. Oh, my word. Okay, I was just looking at Wrexham here. Wrexham in the championship, promoted from League 2 in sixth place. Then last year, they won League 1. I can't believe this. They've just won the championship playoff in sixth place. So Wrexham, three promotions in three years are now in the Premier League. Paul Mullen was the top goal scorer in the whole of the championship. And they also had this guy, uh, Kurtovic, who had the most assists in the league. That's madness. I don't know if I've ever seen an AI team get three promotions in a row. Their media prediction was 24th, and that's that's actually insane. I even I don't really know what to say about that. that I mean, I know Wrexham are a popular team for people to do save games with after Welcome to Wrexham. It's like there's a human manager managing them with those promotions. Also, transfer story's been leaked. What do you mean? Who is leaking our bid for Raphael here? This guy's mad, isn't he? This guy's really mad. I am actually wondering, is he in the National League, Media Dream 11? I'd almost be shocked if he wasn't. Uh, I mean, it doesn't look like he is. I'm kind of surprised by that because he is absolutely insane. Uh, the current best player in the league, by the way, is Liam Haslam, who's 19 years old, on loan from Reading at Rochdale. He's quite good. The strikers who are in the Media Dream 11, by the way, Anto Murphy of Boston United. He does look like a very good player. Released by West Ham, they snapped him up. And then Ty Sodji, uh, this guy, 23 years old, playing for Hartlepool. He's valued at 1.4 to 3.1 million pounds as a player playing in the National League. You can see here, he was actually signed by Geasley and then Hartlepool picked him up for £10,000. I mean, that is an absolute bargain, isn't it, for them? Okay, well, we all knew this was going to happen. Uh, Reading have made a bid for Teo. So unless it's going to be a repeat of the Ricky D situation where Teo values the idea of playing regular first-team football... Uh, we're not going to be signing our Cypriot Prince. Okay, this is actually surprising a little bit. I wasn't expecting Oyatunde to take up this bid. He is taking up. He is heading to Newtown. 50% of any profit. I don't know if they'll even sell him for any profit just because 
well, it's not that good first team because the Welsh league rep is kind of low. Players in that league have generally lower valuations. But £275,000 for him. As much as I love Oyatunde, he's been a backup player this year. He's not been starting in the 11. I've got some very good young strikers. That's just a silly amount of money, isn't it? It's an amount of money that we absolutely should take. It's going to just help with the overall balance, keeping it nice and healthy. In fact... It's probably going to go above a million pounds. I just noticed as well, our youth recruitment is now up at three and a half stars. It was two and a half stars last episode. I've not asked for it to be improved in that time. I don't know if you can remember a few episodes ago. In fact, it doesn't show here now on the board requests. But a few episodes ago, I talked about the fact I'd requested the youth recruitment be improved and then it hadn't changed. And then I requested it again and it did change. I don't know if the youth recruitment kind of requests just work on a big delay. Not going to complain. We're very close to having perfect youth recruitment. In fact, I'm wondering now, can I ask for it to be improved again? No. Okay, that was a little ambitious. On the one hand, I'm sad about Oyerton Day leaving the club, but... Yeah, there is a very big but. It was a lot of money. What it does mean is that Sam Pitt will now move into the spot vacated on the bench. I mean, when you compare the two players here, there's a pretty compelling argument to suggest that Sam Pitt is a better player. And at 19, has a little bit more room for improvement. I might be getting unnecessarily excited here. I was looking at players with contract status expired and sorting them by world reputation. Frank Onyenka, the, the player who plays for Brentford in real life, not a bad little player. I mean, you could see he played regular first team football. They signed him for 8.5 million pounds apparently he's a realistic signing according to this under doubtful i might be setting myself up for disappointment if i could sign this guy to be the defensive midfielder it'd be absolutely in certain never mind starting very early with the trialist spamming this year there's actually a few players whose names i do recognize here ricky j jones was a player who turned up as a potential trialist jack jenkins i feel like i recognize him from a past football manager save I feel like it might have been when i managed leeds united years ago either way we'll take him on trial there's a load of players i'm offering trials to here these are players who haven't actually been released at the end of the current season they've just been free agents at some point during this year and some of them i don't know they, they might be quite good and the best thing about having an under 21s that doesn't play any competitive games is i can just put all the players i don't want to look at like trialists like players like oyatunde who are leaving the club in here and just kind of evaluate them in isolation will smallbone has 27 caps for ireland and is a free agent he was released by southampton after a pretty lackluster year in the championship where to be fair he did play a lot of games i mean he's not a bad player but He's not really the, the rock defensive mid that I'm looking for. Carlo Lulic here, uh, 31 years, he's a bit old, isn't he? 31 years old, bit old. Don't really need more attacking centre mids at this point. Luis Fiorini here was released by Man City of all teams. He played two games for them, apparently, a number of years ago. He looks very unremarkable for a player who was playing for Man City in, in the most respectful way possible. I know I don't need more attackers, but a man with 17 pace and 16 acceleration... I mean, he would be quite fun. I say that. He barely proved himself in League 2 with Wrexham. In fact, you can see here, signed for them for £375,000. Is mega injury prone. And, okay, he's had a few injuries. Maybe not. I'll be real with you. Having looked through all these players I've brought in on trial, none of them are any good. Not sure what I was expecting. So I did make a decision to offer out Cartwright and Perry. These two guys, players who have been in the team a little while, okay backup players but ultimately i could probably get in slightly better better backup players no one wants cartwright as for perry we signed him on a free transfer i've had some transfer offers the highest is 725 pounds from fc romania i feel like fc romania signing an english player should be illegal but i'm not going to question it and instead i am just going to accept all these offers and hope that maybe perry takes one of them he's not a bad player by any means he's just not really good enough for us. If I don't get any bids for Cartwright, I won't panic too much. I don't mind keeping him around. He's a bit like part of the furniture at this point. Plus, he is still contracted for the next three years. Yeah, that was a silly, really long contract to give him, wasn't it? Apparently, Tommy Simkin is attracting interest from Newtown. Are Newtown just planning on signing all of my players? Is this their master plan? I mean, if they want to keep bidding on my players, that would be good. They're like the non-league equivalent of the Saudi Arabian clubs to Premier League teams. I always see people in Football Magic complaining about the Saudi clubs spending silly amounts of money. Maybe Newtown are just my Saudi Arabian sugar daddy. Yeah, keep giving me money. Although, 
don't really want to sell them Simkin of all players. If I am going to sell them to them, they need to bid a lot. In perhaps the most predictable transfer ever, Rafael Teo has agreed to join Reading. Uh, they're paying him £2,000 a week. Yeah, I couldn't really compete with that, could I? On the one hand, unfortunate and annoying that I can't strengthen the team. On the other, probably a blessing that I'm not just signing another striker. I know some people are going to ask about it. Jack, what's happening with the stadium? I wish I knew the answer. We've been searching for a new site for two years for a stadium. I am still worried at some point, all this money I'm squirreling away, saving up, it's just going to be Thanos snapped out of existence for a new stadium. But I'm just going to plod on and hope that it isn't bad. Whatever happens. I love this. Scout update. Scouts are looking at lots and lots of players. A lot of players here playing for Premier League teams who are just being released. Similar to the players uh, I talked about in the intro, players that we have actually signed. Callum Scanlon here is not a bad player. He's actually a little older than some of the players that have been offered our way. I don't really need another left back. I've already got Jamie Stevenson, who's already playing for the under-18s and probably should be in the first team. Uh, he's not as good as Scanlon, I guess you'd argue, but, I mean, there's not a million miles of difference between the players. Yeah, I, I don't need another left back. I've got too many. Our transfer budget, by the way, following off from the sale of Oyatunde, is now at half a million pounds. The money that we've got from the sale hasn't yet hit our bank balance. That will happen when the transfer goes through. I think it's on the 20th of June or the 1st of July, whenever the Welsh transfer window opens. But we'd already have the money to play with. Naturally, I'm going to rejig some of it into the wage budget, which I'm not intending on spending all of. Our wage budget is already far too high, but I do want to improve the wage budget and then increase our scouting range to UK and Ireland. And from here, well, I was going to say, hopefully there's some really exciting young players with contracts expiring to pick up. I mean, there could be here, but there's no one jumping out at me as particularly standout. Although, to be fair, sorting players by value that have a month left on their contract and can leave for free probably is a stupid idea. Rather than doing that, we'll just filter them by division and I'll go for all the English leagues again. Okay, so here are Premier League players, 19 or younger, with contracts expiring that are actually interested in joining us. Fair to say our scouts have already hit a few of these, and that is just through our recruitment focuses. Brooklyn and Funku here... He's very, very quick. He's a left winger. I don't play with wingers. If I did play with wingers, he'd be a great player. Elijah Smith, goalkeeper. I know I need some backup goalkeepers. He's not good enough. Ben Kennedy, goalkeeper. Same, same situation. I'll tell you what, there's a lot of goalkeepers available. Finn here. Finn is very, very good. I'm a bit concerned he's on £3,000 a week and he is inconsistent already. How does he compare with Brian? I feel like he's not actually a million miles away in terms of overall ability. Finn, if you want to join me for a reasonable amount of money, we'll be very, very happy. He only wants to be a future kind of prospect. He's asking for a non-contract as well. Mate, I want to make you our backup. I'll offer you a three-year deal. You're not getting paid £500 per game, but I'll give you 200 because you are the backup goalkeeper. And for unused sub, I mean, this can be high as well because I don't have a sub on goalkeeper at the moment, at least. Although if we get to League 2, I might have a sub goalkeeper. So maybe I should be sensible. How does £150 per week sound as our backup goalkeeper? £200 if you make an appearance. £100 for on the bench. Um, probably should scout him a little bit more. Maybe a bit concerned about him being inconsistent. But as far as emergency goalkeepers go, I mean, he's better than Rob Butler, who came from our youth intake. So, yeah, he could be worth picking up. Kind of amusing, of the 10 Premier League players, 19 or younger, with contracts expiring, uh, four of them were goalkeepers. I have had a look through the other goalkeepers here. Finn is definitely the best of the bunch, and in fact, he's one who was already scouted by our scouts. I checked the Premier League. Now let us check the Championship, where there are nine players. I don't know what. I was expecting more. Dylan Stitt already has offers from Larn, Swansea, and Cole Rain. This guy's very, very good, isn't he? As a striker, 15 finishing, great off the ball, tremendous physicals. But I don't feel like he's that big of an upgrade on the strikers we've already got. Just look through all these players. They're all garbage. I am expecting our reputation to rise a little bit once our promotion's confirmed. That, of course, happens around the 20th to 23rd of June. So I feel like rather than signing any more players for the sake of it, especially because our squad is in a good spot, let's get forward to the start of next season. See what the media prediction and stuff is as well. Maybe that can guide me on how much I actually need to look to improve the team.
Okay, some good news for us. Ben Perry is leaving the building for £600. I know it's not a load of money, but it's a bit of money off the wages. And elsewhere, Bobby Joe Ballinger, you might remember him. He was the really injury-prone player who we took a punt on during this year. I decided to loan him out to Bogner Regis, and actually, he played really well for them. Got nine goals, ten assists. Actually got them promoted as well. So with that in mind, I'm offering to loan him back to them for another year. At 18 years old, he has loads and loads of potential. The injury-proneness is always good going to be an issue but if he could stay fit it's the kind of player who potentially develops well we can look to sell him on next year he's actually currently got four years left on his current deal as well and at the age of 18 the man who was released by bristol city i feel like he could still have a future in football First signing of the transfer special, Finn Brundle. I'll be honest, it's not the most exciting of signings, but he is a good backup goalkeeper, which is what we needed. I am being informed about some of my under-18 players, like McCulloch here, who came through our first youth intake, like Irwin as well. They're, they're too old now, which is a bit of a problem. In an ideal world, we'd get our under-21s playing some competitive football. Uh, at the moment, they don't play in a league. Maybe that could change it. It'd be neat if it could change. It doesn't feel like it's going to, though. Swindon Town have made a bid for Hull Chuddy. This team, by the way, just as a reminder, League Two club, £2 million in the bank. They've offered me for Hull Chuddy 750 quid. £750 for a man who's contracted for the next five years. Do one. Actually, I'm not even going to negotiate. I don't negotiate with, well, idiots. And Swindon Town, idiots. Whole Chuddy is now unhappy about not being able to have the move. Uh, look, Gucci, solve, solve the issue, Gucci. Please solve it. He's not solved it. Now, the issue I've got with Whole Chuddy is, and you might remember, he came through like a, a random lower league team's academy, um, Clanfield. And because of that, his reputation is giga low. And as a result of that, despite the fact he's got a long-term deal, his value is really low. So if I offer to sell him for a reasonable price... I know for a fact he's going to ask to be sold for £5,000. Um, what would it do to convince you to stay? He wants to be playing in League 2 at this stage of his career. It's not something you can see happening at this club. Would a pay rise tempt you? Oh, God. Okay, how much does he think that he should be sold for? £3,000. Uh, you know, I'll say for half a million. He wants £3,000. I've changed my mind. Don't intend on selling you. Mate, you've got five years at the club. You shouldn't have signed a five-year deal if you weren't happy about it. I can see here, beginning of pre-season on the 21st. Oh, it's happening. Shout out to the scouts, by the way. Busy beavering away, finding me more players that I should maybe sign, like Gareth Partridge. He does have a fantastic name. Partridge is just a strong name. He's a right-back come centre-back. Of course, I've already signed a right-back come centre-back in Batumba um, from a Premier League side. Is Partridge better? No. No, he's not. Players have returned for pre-season. That's what we want to see. Code of conduct. Yeah, that's all fine. Jordan Earing, uh, a player who I had on my shortlist, has been potentially signed by a few players. He's not really good enough, so I don't think we're going to make a bid on him. He was on one of my new gen watch list shortlists. And elsewhere, Karon Samuels thinks he should be starting more games. Karon, Karon, Karon. Um, you're a backup player at best at this point, mate. You're literally the eighth best centre back. It'd almost be beneficial if I was just to sell him. I'll sell you for the good of your career. He says that won't be necessary. It is necessary. I've already offered him out. Preston North End have made a bid for Ricky D. Ricky D's value is far too low, isn't it? He's got two years left on his current contract following on from his contract extension after promotion. I was looking at one point at renewing his contract back in April, but he was asking for over a thousand pounds, which didn't seem particularly reasonable. Preston have offered a pitiful £15,000. I don't intend on selling him, so I'm just going to reject that offer. I am now expecting now that I've it continue, he's going to come to me and complain, but... Well, yeah, he hasn't complained yet. Elsewhere, no one wants Samuels. Ruby Town stature increases significantly. Things you love to see. And I think with this hit of continue, I could be wrong. I am wrong. It might be tomorrow. The season is about to tick over. It's very, very exciting. Here we are. Season five. It's officially here. It, it's happening now. Um, yeah, uh, here we are. Aims for the year. Attempt to avoid relegation. Avoid relegation. I'm going to say avoid relegation. We should not go down, and that does give us a bit more money to spend. In terms of aims for the other things, not going to worry about them. It's not like I need more money by increasing the expectations. Now, the board want me to attempt to avoid relegation. What is our media prediction for the year? The answer is fourth. 
which I think is a testament to the quality of our team. But it's kind of interesting that our media expectation is really, really high, and yet the board don't necessarily agree. It's also worth noting that the media prediction you see here is set on this date we're at right now based on our current squad. But obviously, in a week's time, everyone is about to release players with contracts expiring at the end of June. So generally, what happens is you get this initial expectation set, but actually, in a week's time, this list you see here will be radically shuffled. Fortunately for us, we've not got that many players of our own leaving the club. You can see here as well, Ricky D and Goma in the Media Dream 11, which is uh, really cool to see. I didn't notice this earlier. We've broken a thousand social media followers. Go us! Okay, so our under-18s have been invited to play in a competitive league for the coming year. Sadly for us, I've not got the under-21s league invitation in box item. One day it will hopefully arrive. Today's not that day. Also, Ngoma, you might remember this, he'd already agreed to sign a new deal with the club. £700 he signed for, does have a promotional wage rise of 40%, but I feel like he's just worth that. There is a non-promotion release clause in here. I'll be honest, given the fact that this was signed last season, I thought the non-promotion release clause just wouldn't apply. But it turns out it does apply. So if we don't get promoted this year, Ngoma has a release clause. That adds some jeopardy. Oh, and if you were wondering, first league game of the year is against Fleetwood, who you might remember we played in the FA Cup. They have just been relegated. After that, Chester, Telford, Woking, Fylde. I feel like this league is so competitive. You don't really know who the teams are directly competing with you until like a few weeks into the season, maybe even a few months. But yeah, this National League... It is a really tough league to get out of. Just for a bit of context here, our salary per year is £555,000 a week. Rochdale predicted to win the league, have a salary per year of £2 million. They literally spend four times more than us. Okay, interesting transfer offer here. Caron Samuels had a bid on him made by Oldham. They've offered £51,000 plus 20% profit of any future sale. I can't imagine he's the kind of player who's ever going to get sold on for massive am amounts of profit. His actual valuation wasn't as high as the amount they're offering. I'm kind of tempted to negotiate a little bit, but I don't really want to push my luck here. £55,000? You know what, for a man who's literally our maybe 8th, 7th best centre-back, that's more than enough money. And with that transfer going through, just for my own organisation, I know this is what the squad planner's for, I don't use the squad planner, I'm just going to move him to the under-21s. This is now how the first team looks for the coming year. It's a little on the bare side, but of course we have got one or two players joining us, including a backup goalkeeper. Waters contract expired, Ovendale contract expired, McAvoy contract expired. McAvoy is on £400 a week, which if we just compare that to our current first team squad, would still have him in kind of the top six earners at the team. One thing that I think we have done a really good job with this year is with a lot of the depth players we've brought in, signing them for under £200 a week. Like, we are actually being pretty sensible with our wages. But with that all said, Waters, Ovendale, McAvoy, thank you for your service, gentlemen. You've all been beautiful in your own little weird ways, even you, Evan. But contracts expired i don't need you here goodbye the welsh premier league transfer windows open simkin is wanted by newtown we'll see what happens there uh, by the way brundle has now joined us our new backup goalkeeper he's been put in the under 21s he's now gonna be put in the first team and oyerton day apparently fan reaction d he'll be missed around the club i'm sure he will be we did just receive £275,000 for a backup striker. I think the fans will get over it. Middlesbrough are offering a trial to Hull Chuddy. Absolutely not. Do not go near our a Hull Chuddy. I know we've not done a whole lot of transfers today for a transfer special, but in terms of part one of what is a significant transfer window, I'm actually pretty happy with the, the wheeling and dealing we've done. Our first team squad currently sits at 21 players. If Cartwright is demoted, which I might just do now um, suddenly that squad is even more barren we're definitely in a position where there's a few more players to bring in there's probably a few youth players i should be looking to promote as well joe richards can maybe step in for the gap that oyotunde's left behind there's players like paul clark as well who's a decent little center back stevenson as well probably should be in the first team but nevertheless I, f I feel pretty happy with some of the sales and just general organization that we've done i feel like i'm now ready to go find the defensive midfielder of our dream and hopefully plot a promotion campaign in what is a difficult league but now that it is the first of july and as i mentioned all the teams kind of released players have happened and stuff you can see now we are now the favorites for promotion and in fact with players leaving their clubs 
We have now four players in the Media Dream 11, three of them are our defenders. Anyway, folks, we're going to leave things there for today. I will be back tomorrow with another transfer special to end the week. For people wondering about the Christmas upload schedule, it's a little up in the air at the moment, but there should be videos on Christmas Day on Monday. There probably won't be one on Boxing Day because there's a load of football on, so there's not really a good time to put up a video, but it gives you a chance if you were busy on Christmas to watch the video from the day before. Then Wednesday onwards, it will just be the normal daily uploads through next week. Knowing me, I'll probably mention this in next video because I'm fully aware not everyone gets to the end of these longer ones. Let me know what you think of the transfer business so far. Who do you think needs replacing in the starting 11? Was I right to sell Oyatunde? I feel like that is a decision that could split opinion, but ultimately I think it is just the right decision. Besides all of that, have a lovely Thursday. We'll be back on Friday for more Parked Pro action. And until then, it is me, Jack. I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.